Hello everyone and welcome to another video on this channel. In a previous video, and just check the pop-up banner on the screen, we talked about private Azure Kubernetes server clusters and then some of the DNS options to attach a name to the IP address of the Kubernetes API server. And we discussed the three available options. The first one being system, where Microsoft creates a private DNS zone in the node resource group. The second one being the non-option, where actually public DNS servers are used to create a name that returns a private IP in your network. Now, neither of these options might be the one you want to go for. In a lot of enterprise scenarios, you have custom DNS servers that you use. For example, custom Active Directory domain controllers with DNS on it that you're using, or maybe you're using a solution such as Infoblox. Yeah, in that case, you want to integrate private DNS zones with that existing solution. And then you might want to, well, let's rephrase that, you probably will, well, let's rephrase that, for sure, <laughs> you will um, integrate these private DNS zones with your existing DNS infrastructure. Let's take a look at what we are going to build here. So first of all, take a look at the top of this image here. We'll have a central VNet, which contains just a subnet, and that contains a domain controller of a domain called baka.local, but that's not really that important. The domain controller runs a DNS server, and that DNS server is integrated with this VNet. So that means that all systems that run within this VNet will actually use this DNS server instead of the Microsoft DNS servers. Now we also created already the private DNS zone that we'll need for our AKS cluster that is running in West Europe. As you'll see later, when we create an AKS cluster, we have the option to specify a private DNS zone that already exists. When we create this cluster in West Europe, the name of the DNS zone will include the West Europe name as well. So we have already pre-created this private DNS what we have also done is we have integrated this domain controller with this private DNS zone by using a forwarder rule to the Azure DNS servers. In a moment, I'll show you how that works. Now, before we continue, uh, of course, the point is that we deploy an AKS cluster. We'll do that in a separate VNet and, of course, a separate subnet. The VNet will be peered with the central VNet. And of course, this VNet, the AKS VNet, will also use this DNS server and not the Azure DNS servers. So that means that this VNet will be able to resolve also the names which are within that private DNS zone over here. Now we'll have a recap of this later. Now let's first take a look at the configuration of that domain controller. Here we are in server manager of the domain controller you have just seen on the diagram. Let's take a look at the DNS console. So here we are, DNS console. And this yeah, DNS server is running on this domain controller and I have full uh, domain integration of my DNS. So you'll see my uh, domain name here, baka.local. I see the record of that domain controller uh, also in, in the zone here. Nothing too special, that's the standard thing that happens with uh, Active Directory and then DNS integration in Active Directory. Now what you do see here is a conditional forwarder. There's a conditional forwarder for privatelink.westeurope.azmk8s.io and all the requests that go to this domain, they're actually forwarded to 168.63.129.16. And that is a special address that represents the Azure provided DNS servers in the VNet. Now to create such a forwarder, you just right click and you ask for new conditional forwarder. You type in the name of the zone you want to forward for, and then you type in the address of the forwarder. In this case, for private DNS zones, again, that's this special 168 dot and so on address. Now, you should not store this conditional forwarder in Active Directory because only the DNS servers that live in the VNet that's associated to the private DNS zone will be able to 
practically resolve this IP or connect to this IP uh, from their point of view, right? So if you replicate this conditional forwarder to something like an on-premises domain controller, yeah, that of course will not work with, with this address over here. So don't turn on the uh, storing of conditional forwarders in Active Directory. Here we are in the resource group that contains my domain controller virtual machine. Now you can see it over here. Now the private DNS zone was also created in this resource group. So I created this private link, West Europe, etc. private DNS zone myself and our AKS cluster will later be instructed to register its records in that zone. Now you have seen also that in the DNS configuration with a conditional forwarder on the Windows server that I set up a conditional forwarder for this domain. Of course, that means that the uh, network that my domain controller is running in needs to be linked as well to this private DNS zone. And that's also something I took care of. If you click on this private DNS zone, here we can see there's a virtual network link and the VNet DC virtual network that contains my domain controller is linked to this private DNS zone. This means that we are ready to deploy our AKS server and make sure it registers its records within this uh, zone. Now, maybe one thing before we do that, I created a test record over here. Let's see if we can resolve this test record. I am back on the VM and everything you have seen so far, like the conditional forwarder, but also the integration of the network with the private DNS zone, should make sure that I can resolve the name you see here. So let's try and do this. And as you remember, I set up this uh, record test to be 1.1.1.1. And that's an address on the internet that also replies to ICMP requests, to ping requests. So as you can see, this resolution of that name to that IP works perfectly. Okay, let's start with the AKS deployment. Let's look at the diagram again before we deploy AKS. So we will deploy AKS in a separate VNet. The VNet is called the AKS VNet and it's peered to our central VNet. And we have this AKS subnet over here in which we will deploy our AKS cluster. And remember, the VNet is using a custom DNS server pointing to this domain controller, this DNS server over here. This is the resource group that contains the VNet. So if you look at the VNet, you see here, it's called VNet AKS, as you know, and we have indeed the peering to the central VNet that contains our domain controller and our DNS server. And we've set the DNS server of this VNet to a custom one, namely 10.1.1.4. So we have this VNet here. There's a subnet here called AKS, and we will deploy our AKS cluster within this subnet. Now it's important to note that if you want to use a custom private DNS zone, you'll have to provide a managed identity to the AKS deployment. I've created a managed identity here. Here you see it, it's called UMI AKS, which is a regular managed identity. If you click on that, there's nothing really special to see. It's a managed identity object of the type user assigned managed identity. Now, before we go into details of looking at what the requirements are um, for this managed identity, let's first try and deploy our AKS cluster. Instead of using BICEP, let's deploy this with the Azure CLI because this will make the process a little bit clearer. So we are going to create our AKS cluster, of course, in a resource group, right? I'm going to give it a name. The network plugin is Azure. And of course, I have to specify the ID of the subnet that I want to deploy my AKS cluster in. Got a couple of other things here, but of course important for this one to work is that you enable managed identity and that you also assign the identity that I've just shown you, that UMI AKS user managed identity. Next, we enable a private cluster. We set a load balancer SKU to standard, and then we specify the private DNS zone that we would like to uh, update with the record of the API server. If I go ahead and try to do this, uh, let's see what happens. And it doesn't take long for this one to add her out. 
The reason is quite simple. If you look at the uh, error details here, is that our user assigned identity does not have the right to read and write to this custom private DNS zone, and it needs to update that record over there. So we're gonna first provide access rights to our user managed identity to be able to update that private DNS zone. I'm in the private DNS zone now, and we can just go to access control IAM, and there we're gonna add a role assignment. The role we're gonna select is the uh, DNS uh, role, private DNS zone contributor. We're gonna give it to a user assigned managed identity, and I there have a couple of them. Here I have my UMI AKS, and just click save to do so. Now, that means that our user managed identity has access rights to update this private link DNS zone. We're now back at the managed identity in the Azure role assignment section. And it's clear that the private DNS zone contributor role was given to our identity. Now what the Azure CLI command did that wanted to deploy AKS, it provided the network contributor role automatically to this managed identity and then specifically for the AKS subnet that we're going to deploy in. Now this is possible because the account I'm using has this, has this access right to do so. In most cases, this will be something that you will do in advance as well. For example, in templates and so on, you would give this network contributor role in advance. But let's be clear, in this case, it was the Azure CLI that did this for me. Okay, let's try to install AKS once again. Okay, we're back in the shell, so let's run the AZ AKS create command again. And here we are as a result, but sadly there was an error. The thing that happens here is that the AKS deployment tries to link this uh, VNet to the private DNS zone as well. And that obviously fails because the managed identity that we are using does not have the correct access rights uh, to do so. So let's get that fixed. I'm now in the VNet that I'm using to deploy AKS2 in the subnet called AKS. And in the access control in the IIM settings, I added a role assignment of network contributor to my user managed identity called UMI AKS. That should be enough to make sure we don't get that error in the previous section. With role-based access control now the way it should be, uh, after rollout of the AKS cluster using the Azure CLI, you get this as a result in the Azure portal. And just take a look at the API server address here. So this name is being created here. There is some randomness in the name. And so I, I expect that this record was added to the private link West Europe zone that we created ourselves already in the beginning of this video. So if you go back to our private DNS zone, you'll indeed see that that record is over here. And this is the address of our API server. Now, what also was done was the creation of a virtual network link. That's not really required in this case because the only thing that should be linked here is our VNet DC VNet. So the VNet that contains my DNS server, that should be linked to this private DNS zone. The other ones don't need to be linked because they will use this DNS server to resolve the names. Anyway, although it's redundant, it's not something that's really in the way here. I'm now on an Ubuntu client that's in a VNet that's using our DNS server, our custom DNS server. So that custom DNS server should be able to resolve the AKS private name properly. So let's see if that really works. So let's try and just use ping here. And this is the address we've seen just a moment ago. When I press enter, you can indeed see that indeed this results to 10.2.1.5. There's of course no response because the API server does not respond to ping requests. So our private DNS name resolution with a private AKS server is working properly. So we've come to the end of this video where we took a look at how to create a private AKS cluster, but then register the DNS name of that private AKS cluster's API server into a private DNS zone that we created beforehand. And we integrated our own custom DNS with that private DNS. So any client that uses our custom DNS can resolve the names in our private DNS zone. Of course, when we deploy such a cluster, it's important that you realize that you have to use a managed identity or a user managed identity. And here in the screenshot, you see also the Azure role assignments that you need to provide. So we provided the private DNS zone contributor 
on the private DNS zone, and we also provided the network contributor on the entire VNet that we used to deploy AKS. The other two Azure Row assignments were actually given during the AZ AKS create uh, command that ran because I as a user also have that access right as an owner to set these permissions. I hope that's a bit more clear to you. If you have questions, do leave them in the comments and see you some other time for another video. Bye bye.